The key to success on the field and in your backyard is a comprehensive game plan. So if you're building a fence or a deck this year, trust a Terkstra coach to design, quote, or order the right materials for your project. Visit a Terkstra Lumber near you to learn more. From the Tie Cats Audio Network, this is the Coach O Show with Luke Tasker. Welcome back to the Coach O Show with Luke Tasker. The Tie Cats are getting ready with a long week of prep for Game Two of the season. That's at Toronto this Sunday, June 18th at 7 p.m. Coach, coming back from Winnipeg, obviously not the, the start that the Tie Cats wanted. As you're coaching your way through that film with your team this week, what jumped out at you? Yeah, I think I think the biggest thing was just our execution rate was was low, and we got we got behind early and had to had to claw back. Proud of the grit and the way we fought. Um, very disappointed in just not making our plays when they presented themselves. And um, you know the, the fine fixtures and details as we go through the film. You know a lot of it uh, there hadn't been any signs of that to be honest with you uh, throughout training camp and those type of things. Even in the preseason game, while we didn't play perfect. Um, some of the things that that showed up uh, in the game we, we hadn't really experienced or and so yeah we had to make some adjustments along the way and um, you're playing you know that's a good football team and uh, when you fall behind and you don't do the little things right against a, a great football team that's been in a championship game for three straight years uh, you end up with a halftime result that uh, wasn't very wasn't very nice looking yeah what are some of those things that are that were unexpected that came up like game situation kind of stuff yeah game situation you know we we hadn't had any challenges getting off the field in second and long we were hitting our explosion shots mm -hmm. you know m maybe they were drops and you know had the one in the in the preseason game early against toronto but right. you know we had we had made big plays uh, down the field uh, we hadn't kicked the ball out of bounds you know on kickoffs just thing things that were self-inflicted were just extremely frustrating and that's not conducive to consistent winning football and when that happens all at once it's a lot and when you do it against a great team that's what happens you, you get whooped early and then once you settle in and stop doing those things and you start getting some completions down the field and you get off the field on second down and you have good punt placement and you kick the ball through the through the through the pipes and and you don't throw interceptions um great things happen and then it's a football game yeah you mentioned, you know, there's just a few misses, especially with the long ball <clears throat> in the passing game. And I, to me, the question naturally rises, is it a result of a, of a quarterbacks and wide receivers who just haven't been together that long? Like, do you, do you just have to wait until that gets corrected? Yeah, I think sometimes at the end of the, at the end of the day, you know, pro sports is, uh, you know, in some aspects that's very forgiving. You know, I always like to use the baseball example. If you go three for 10 in baseball, you're breaking millions of dollars and, you know, you're, you're doing really well. If you hit three of 10 passes, that's not good. If you get beat three out of 10 times as a DB, that's not good. Mm -hmm. So everything's not equal. So sometimes people have bad days. Some people strike out three times at the plate and the next day they go three for three. And it was a just an off day. And so I can't tell you that it's going to get fixed in a week. I can't tell you it's going to get fixed in a month. All I can tell you is that we are going to address those challenges hard and we're going to coach it. We're going to stay the process. We're not going to be discouraged because I know we're capable. That's great. The, as an onlooker to a game like that, you mentioned the first quarter, it's almost like before you realize you know that 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 there's some execution lacking the score is already a little bit lopsided and so it, it's hard to sort of wrap your mind around what happened or what to do but as a coach i imagine when you, you're getting back in the office i mean i i assume you're sort of going through a process of turning that gray area into black and white i mean can you, can you you're identifying lists of of things that you can change of controllables and uncontrollables and does it sort of clarify in that day after the game that, you know, it's not, it wasn't as lopsided as, as we thought it was. It was really came down to these five plays. Well, I think you're always evaluating those things. You're saying, first of all, are we good enough? Do we have enough talent to win? Yes or no. Are we good enough? Are we just, mm -hmm. you know, is this a bottle of hope or what is this? Okay. If we are great. Okay. How did we get beat? 
you know, on let's start, you know, defensively. Okay, we fell down twice. Um, you know, is that going to happen again? I don't know. It, you you would you would think it wouldn't happen again. You know, we drop an interception in the end zone that is just a dropped interception, right. and you say, okay, is that going to happen again? Are we going to kick two balls out of bounds? Are we going to miss these overthrows? Moral victories stink, but you have to say, are these correctable? Are these correctable and are they controllable? And I, I think that they are. And so then you say, okay, well, what are we going to, how are we going to fix it? What, what are we going to do? And then that's just kind of the process. And then you go to work and you, you go to work on fixing that. And at the same time, you don't stay complacent, you know, just there. You got to continually get better. That doesn't mean you add more always. Uh, sometimes you subtract, but. Uh, sometimes it just needs better execution and, you know, there's going to be days when we're going to hit all those and the score will be that way in our favor. Hmm. Yeah. That's, that's interesting insight there. That's, that's, uh, that's clarifying as to, as to the problems that you have and, and, and helps to sort of identify how much of it is controllable. Just to ask the question, how likely is it that that will happen again? And I guess a lot of times you're right. The answer is really maybe not that likely, you know, there are, there are some things that happen in football games that you just, that you just don't expect. Um, I remember games like that, especially when, the, especially when it becomes a two score game in the first quarter, that's always, you know, you're, you're looking at a lot more game to play and you have a, a, a mountain to climb. And sometimes in some teams, the energy, you know, can get so low or so negative on the sidelines there. And, of all plays in football, a blocked punt maybe is the best play to revive the energy of the sidelines there. Did you guys feel that in the third quarter when you got that block? Did 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 the energy, you know, reverse? Did it pick up? Abs absolutely. I mean, I think you you know from being there naturally, whether you know knowingly or not, there's ebbs and flow of games, as they say. And we were having problems seizing the momentum like they had it. And that was the first sign of, OK, we're, pu we're putting this we're putting a little stop in this here. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so you, you felt a little lift there and like, OK, here we go. This is you know, this is more like us. Like we have playmakers on this team. We're going to make plays. We don't know who's going to make them. And it ended up being from two rookies, right? Two first year players. Yeah, in, in, in Flowers Lloyd and then obviously with Bayless falling on it there. Um that was a key point, you know. And you know, at the same time if that punt gets off, you're you're hoping we got great field position there and Woods is gonna do something with it. We felt we did a decent job in special teams that yeah. we're we're you know, we we're close and I thought you know, you're not gonna break everyone. I'm not gonna sit here and say, Oh, we were close to breaking, but giving the ball across the center line is very conducive to winning and complimentary football. Yeah, first play of the game across the uh, the center line from your return uh, unit. The uh, <clears throat> two huge special teams plays. I mean, really close to being two special teams touchdowns really in the game. And then, of course, you get a defensive touchdown as well. Those are obviously encouragements and, and, and uh, uh, you know, victories and small victories for for the team. What else did you take away from Winnipeg? What were you talking about with the team as far as what was encouraging, what they did well? No, the effort was extremely high. And when you turn the tape on, you're going to see people not quitting, running to the football. The goal line stand was a testament of who we are and how we're built. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the offense coming down and scoring that two-point play at a – at that, that that crucial time to make it an eight point game when if they don't get it it's a nine point game and then we're in a whole different realm. Are we onside kicking? Is there enough time? You know, you're in that whole game. So that you saw a lot of resilience and then the fact that we had to put Casey Sales in at guard, move Brandon Revenberg to tackle. You've got we have the right people. And that's that's important. You know, sometimes you don't know that you have the right people and not because they're bad, just it doesn't fit the team. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, oftentimes people always keep the right experience to do the job. But we just truly believe around here that you, you got to find the right people to join your team. And I do think there's a distinct difference there. So um, taking away effort and obviously just the resilience in the second half of people stepping up. Can you. Can you touch on the Casey Sales uh, uh, change in the game? I mean, a new a new guy on the Ty Cats roster and a first game of the season. Was he was he told that he was the that he was the uh, the seventh guy in? 
Yeah, we he, we always have that every every week, and you know, and Teddy's Teddy's even the emergency after mm-hmm. that. So you just you you know about it, but how often do you ever get to it? And you know, that's that's just huge. I mean, nobody will notice that. The people, some people listening, are going to say what? Yeah, right. I mean, we have a D tackle at guard, and Revenberg moves to tackle, and we don't have certain packages on offense. There's not a plethora, and those aren't excuses. I'm just, re- I'm just telling you the news. Those are the yeah. facts of what happened in the game, and I'm telling you that I'm proud of how, you know, you got a guy that's paid to go get the quarterback, and now all of a sudden he's took zero reps, and now he's protecting the quarterback on a cadence against you know some pretty good people there. So. Um, just super proud of just the willingness. You can always get people to participate, but I think the key word is always willing. Mm -hmm. Can you get a willing, can you get them to willingly participate? We have those people. Yeah. And the, for a casual listener, maybe that, especially if you have a lot of experience with other sports, like, you know, if, uh, from going from a hockey defensive man to a forward or, you know, certainly in basketball, that's, those are all similar body types and, Yes, offensive line to defensive line, similar body type too. But you're talking about two different, two different football minds. Right? Mm-hmm. That's a, that's a whole different way of thinking, and that's and to just have to be able to be to plug and play in the middle of a game that is not an easy transition to make. So, good good for good for him for being able to, like you said, be willing and able to to make that change. That's pretty impressive. No, I I couldn't echo it any better. It just. And but the the odd thing is not to to downplay it or to water it down is to tell you that I'm surprised that Casey did that. It would be a lie because mm-hmm. that's just who he is. But it shouldn't be downplayed. Uh, just all the snaps he took. Yeah. Well, on to Toronto now, Coach. It's their first game of the season, which is sort of that unusual first week by week for them, but unusual for you that. For the second week in a row, you don't have live film to watch as you prepare for for uh, the team you're going to play. Um, you're coaching your way into this game. What's on the must do list for your team? What do you demand from these guys as they go to Toronto? Just to be better than we were last week. It's a process. You know, along the process, you need to win. That's that's a given. Mm-hmm. Um, winning is a byproduct of staying the course, figuring out your football team, doing the little things. Uh, that make the big difference. That's really what it's about. It's about deliberate practice. What are we going to work on that we didn't do well? You know, that'll start today, and we go out there and as a, we'll call it a day zero, and we'll we'll get to work on on some of the things. We'll implement a little bit of the plan, but yeah, this is a unique situation where they're going to be extremely fresh. It's their home opener, and then you add there is no week one film, and that's just what it is. So. What a what another great opportunity to really hone in and focus on yourself because you really don't know what you're preparing for. Yeah, there's film from last year in the Grey Cup, and yeah, you use those as 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 guiding guide markers. But you know, at the end of the day, they're going to have a different identity. They have a different quarterback. They've mm-hmm. got different people. Um, yeah, the schemes may remain relatively the same, but nothing ever really stays the same, and we won't stay the same. Yeah. Do you have a sense for Chad Kelly yet or what to expect or or is there uh, a game plan that suits uh, going in against a quarterback like that? No, nah, just, you know, obviously he's super mobile. He's confident, uh, seems to love football, uh, came in and, you know, some would, you know, argue that, you know, without him, maybe maybe they don't finish that Grey Cup. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he made, you know, he's been in a big game. He's He's a champion, part of a a championship team. So he brings that and, you know, and I'm sure he's going to evolve, right? There's, there's certain things that in their offense that they probably didn't put in last year because of the different skill set of, of McLeod, uh, Bethel Thompson. So, you know, we'll see. And, you know, he hasn't played four full quarters, you know, of, of a game. So, um, we, we know what his skill sets are, but we don't know exactly how they're going to exploit those. Yeah. Coach, let's get into a fan question here. Every week on the Coach O Show with Luke Tasker, we have one question from fans, and you guys can email those into gameday at ticats.ca. This is from Mike on the Mountain. Coach, 
How are the uniforms decided on? Do you and your staff pick each week or is it decided in advance? Any superstitions with what uniform combos have won or lost recently? Thanks and go Ticats. <laughs> Interesting question. I appreciate it. Uh, no, we do not uh, vote on the uniforms. Uh, our equipment guy, along with uh, Matt Afnick and all those things are established uh, ahead of time. Uh, you do have to declare what you're going to be wearing and, and what your road uniforms are and that sort of thing. But it is not decided on by me or the coaches. I think they've showed me a few times, like when we've brought out the old, uh, the new grays and those type of things. And they kind of say, we're going to wear these on, you know, Labor Day and we're going to change our helmet. I guess it'd be decals versus decals, depending on how you were raised with it. Um, those type of things happen. Um, but really, it's it's all kind of predetermined. Mm -hmm. What about, do you think, is, does Drew take into account superstitions or, or the win-loss records of those uniforms? <laughs> we'll have to have him make a guest appearance on here we and, and really be, figure, figure out, yeah, it would be good. Just a little inside-out perspective on it. Um, but, that man, speak talk about people that contribute to winning that never show up, you know, there's all those people behind the scenes from therapists to equipment to there's just so many ticket sales, but you could go on and on. But when you talk about the equipment, uh, folks, man, they grind. Yeah. Do they grind? And that's not a disrespect to everybody else who grinds. I'm just saying it's a different type of deal. Oh yeah. I mean, the business offices is, is they're grinders too. The, the difference is that yes. equipment and training, they live the hours and lifestyle of, of the, of coaches, you know, they're, they have an unusual and, and intense, uh, uh, work schedule, but yeah, full of, full of great people. We should have drew on to talk about his, uh, strategy yes. or thought process of uniforms. Um, interestingly, RJ actually in our broadcast each week, Hey, well, we're the audio network, right? So he does, he gives he paints the picture with his he tells talks about the uniforms and the helmets, but he actually does keep the win loss record of uniforms uh, in his. I love notes. it. Yes, uh, so he has he has maybe some insight into that. But uh, Mike on the mountain, thanks for the question. That's great. Again, send your questions to Game Day at TyCats.ca, and we'll pick one uh, for Coach each episode. The Coach O Show with Luke Tasker is presented by Turkster Lumber. Check out the project coaches at Turkster Lumber. They can help with every part of your home reno from designing a deck to ordering a new front door. Learn more at TurksterLumber.com. Coach, as always, I appreciate your insight and your time. Good luck with the, uh, the day zero practice and looking forward to this uh, Sunday night. Thanks, Luke. We'll see you next week. Another episode of the Coach O Show with Luke Tasker is in the books. Let us know your thoughts. Email us at gamedayatticats.ca. Coach O and Luke are back next week to discuss the latest from the locker room. Subscribe to the Ticats Audio Network on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts.